welcome back to Introducing Persistence. In the last lesson, we created the My Utilities test class and we were ready to start coding our first test method using the JUnit4 syntax. In this lesson, we're going to finish up the test method for the save string to file and get string from file methods, and then we'll start writing the actual save string to file method. Now, as we saw in the last lesson, the import statements and the method naming are different in JUnit 4 than they were in JUnit 3. The good news is that once we get into the body of the test methods, the assert statements work pretty much the same as they did in JUnit 3. So let's start entering the code. First, we'll give ourselves some more room by double clicking. So the first thing we're going to do is create a test string called save string and it's going to have two lines. This is test line 1 backslash n plus this is test line 2 backslash n. Then we're going to create a new object of type file called test file and we'll talk about this in a minute. The name is going to be test save to string dot text. And then we're going to use a method on the test file called the delete method, testfile.delete. Then we're going to assert false, and we're going to put in a message here, file should not exist. And then inside the assert false, we're going to test the value testfile.exists. Let's look at what we've got so far. First, we're creating a string called save string that's just got two lines of text, each line ending in this backslash n, which is a new line character. Now this is an important detail. As we'll see later, when we read strings from a text file, the new line characters are stripped out. So we'll be adding them back in in our read method. This means that every text file needs to end with a new line Otherwise, the test is going to fail. Now, the next thing we do is create this new file object called test file, and we give it the file name test save to string dot text. File objects in Java are in the java.io package, so we need to import this package. But wait, Eclipse already did this for us. When we created the file object and executed the delete method, Eclipse automatically added the import java.io.file statement. Way to go, Eclipse! Now, a file object in Java does not let us do anything with the contents of the file. It just lets us manipulate the file entry in the system's file directory. In this case, we just want to delete our test file if it exists, so we don't accidentally run a test with an old version of the file. So we'll use the delete method of the file object to delete the file. Then we assert that the file doesn't exist to make sure that we deleted it successfully. Now note that we're using an option in the assert statement to enter in a custom fail message. This file should not exist is our custom fail message. So that's the message that will be displayed if the test fails. Now, this is a really good idea for two reasons. First, it makes it easier when a test fails to know which test failed. Secondly, in agile development, or sometimes called extreme programming, these unit tests are the primary documentation for the class under test. This custom message allows us to make it very clear what the test is doing, and it makes it easier to read the test methods. Now let's continue with the test code. We're going to give ourselves a little room and type assert true and we're going to put the message file should have been saved and then we're going to execute my utilities dot save string to file and then inside the parentheses we're going to put the name of the file, test save string dot txt, and then a comma, and then we're going to put the name of the string, save string. 
This line is asserting that when we invoke the SaveStringToFile method, it will return a true value. So in this statement, we're specifying two things. That this method will return a Boolean true or false value based on whether the method is successful. And then second, that it will take two string parameters, the file name, TestSaveString.Text, and the string to save inside the file, the SaveString variable. Note that we are executing the SaveStringToFile method at the same time that we are evaluating its return value. Now we have the file saved. Let's read it and make sure the string we get equals the string we saved. So we're going to say string new string equals my utilities dot get string from file then the name of the file, test save string dot txt, the same file we saved up above. Then we're going to assert true, and we're going to put a message, save and get strings should be equal, and then we're going to put in that save string dot equals new string. So we'll save our work. So this line creates a string, new string, and it sets it equal to the contents of the test save string dot text file using our get string from file method. Finally, we assert that the two strings are equal. Note that we're using the dot equals method of the string and not the double equal sign. In Java, strings are objects, and when we check objects for equality, we normally use the dot equals method of the object, and we'll talk more about this in a later lesson. So to sum up, we're saying that the save string to file and get string from file methods will work when we can successfully do these operations. Now, are there any other cases we should test? Well, what if a user tries to run get string from file on a non-existent file? What about save string to file on a non-existent disk system or directory? Now, both of these cases are situations where our methods could fail and possibly crash the program. So we want to make sure that even when the user tries to do something that won't work, the program doesn't halt. So we'll add two more test cases as follows. First we're going to say assert false. We're going to put the message file should not be saved. And then we're going to try to save to a directory that doesn't exist. So we're going to say myutilities dot save string to file and then inside we're going to put a directory that doesn't exist. So we're going to say non-existent directory slash this should fail dot text. Now that could be anything, it just needs to be something where it won't save successfully because the directory doesn't exist. Then we're going to set a new string called empty string and we're going to use the myutilities dot get string from file and we're going to put in a bad file name. So this is it could be anything again. We're saying bad file name dot text. It could be anything as long as the file doesn't exist. And then we're going to assert true and we're going to say string should be empty. So we're going to assert true that the empty string dot length is equal to zero. And again, we're going to save our file. In this line, we're trying to save a file to a non-existent directory on our system. We don't want the program to crash, but the method should return a false indicating that it did not succeed. We could also print something out to the system console to let the user see what went wrong. 
Now this line creates a string called empty string and then it retrieves a string value from a file that doesn't exist. So here we're asserting that the string we retrieved, empty string, should have a length 0. So again, the program won't crash, the string will just be empty. And again, we could print something out to the system console to let the user know that things didn't go as expected. At this point, we've got a pretty good test case. If our methods pass this test, we can be reasonably confident that they work as we expect. Also, this test method provides clear documentation for the two methods being tested. Now, we notice that we've got a number of compiler errors. This is not surprising. Remember that the My Utilities class doesn't even exist yet. So our next step is to use Quick Fix to create the My Utilities class and the empty methods. So the first thing is we'll do is we'll go up to the My Utilities, click on it, press Control-1, and the first thing it says is create class My Utilities, which is what we want to do, so we'll click that. Now, we have to be careful. It assumes we want to create it in the same directory that we're working in, but we want to use a different folder. We're in the test folder. We want to create the class in the source folder, so we'll open the window select source and then we'll just take the rest of the defaults and press finish and now we've created an empty class my utilities so we'll go back to our test class and that's gotten rid of the first error now we need to create the empty method save string to file so again we'll click on it control 1 create method save string to file type string string which is what we want so we'll click that and it's created our empty method and again we can come back and clean this up later so we'll save go back to my utilities test and now we've got an error on the get string from file so we'll click on that control 1 create method and now we've got our two empty methods we'll save go back and now we compile cleanly at this point we're ready to start coding the save and get methods which is what we'll do in the next lesson this is the end of lesson three I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now <laughs>